Hi folks, hope you're all well and all sheltered in place. And for some of us, it's very difficult. And some of us, it's not hard at all. We're homebodies. <laughs> uh, the Lord gave me a message today. It's a continuation of what I did two weeks ago about repent. But actually, it goes clear back to 2005. The Lord gave me a message. He gave me a word back then. I preached on it several times when I was with uh, Spencerville Full Gospel Church. And uh, some of the highlights of that message then uh, was that the bad things are going to happen to this country. There's going to be an economic downfall. There's going to be division in the government, division in society. There's going to be natural disasters. Uh, there's going to be a terrorist attacks. There's going to be more shootings. A, var a variety of things, which I believe the next video, go video, I'm going to talk about that. But the message today is to the church. Next week it's about society, maybe. To the church. So how does the church fit in with all this when things are happening and things are bad and there's a pandemic and there's a virus and people are dying and, and there's troubles and there's economic troubles and the government's doing this and the government's doing that. So how do we fit in? Well, back then, the Lord told me, and the way that He speaks to me, He says He would use all these problems and troubles as a whip to drive His people back to Him. Makes sense to me. Because some of us have strayed off and gotten away from God. Some of us are straddling the fence. Worldly one day and Christian next. Uh, God knows what He's doing. But this fan, the Lord began to speak to me about this fan. And before I get into that, I'd like to read out of John, not John, but Matthew, the third chapter of John speaking. And he says in verse 11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than me, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Now this process is called winnowing, where they would bring in the uh, grain and the, and the stalks it, and they were led on the threshing board and they would thrash that so it would separate the grain from the stalks. And then they, we had a, they had a winnowing fork. They would, and they'd get it on a windy day, they'd pitch that up and the wind would blow the chafe away. The chafe was the debris, was dirt, sticks, grass, whatever was caught up in the grain. And the grain would fall back down. But it took a good strong wind to do that. The thing that's happening in society today, and, and things that I believe is going to happen that comes right, that's going to happen right behind it, is that God's going to use it on the church to blow away some of the chafe, uh, to uh, purify us, if I can say it that way. Uh, for some, here's what the Lord gave me about this fan. Some, it's going to be on low. This this fan has three settings: low, and for some, it's going to be on medium. And some it's going to be on high. It's going to blow harder. I would imagine because some of us are stiff back and hard-headed. We won't repent. <laughs> Maybe that's why. And then something else he said. And for some, it won't blow at all. Now there's one more thing about this fan. This fan has a remote. And I have the remote. And I can turn this fan on anytime I want. And I can put it on any setting I want. Jesus has the remote to everything in your life and my life. He's the one that controls how much wind's going to blow. Because he knows exactly where you are and where I'm at and what it's going to take to get us to turn our stiff necks and come back to him. And let go of all of our little idols and all of our little things and all the little things that we're caught up in. He's going to blow away the chafe. The ones that none, nothing's going to blow on, I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about the tomato plants that I'm, that I'm starting to grow right now. They're real little, baby tomato plants. When I give them water, I just drop a little drop out of an eyedropper around their roots. I don't just pour water on them because it would break them. There's a lot of Christians that just gotten saved. God's not going to allow too much into their life because they, it would kill them. It would hurt them. And there might be those who... God has worked on quite a bit already and got all the chief load off on them. I don't know. 
But for some, it won't blow at all. But for some of us that are a little bit more hard-headed, he may have to turn it up to high. I don't know. Only you know and God knows where you're at. But I do know this, that God loves us. And that God does not want us to perish with the world. And it says in Hebrews that he would chasten us that we might be a partaker of his righteousness. So, what do you do when there's a pandemic? What do you do when everything's going south or sour? Run to the rock. It says, I believe in Psalm, run to the rock that is higher than I. Jesus is our provider. Jesus is our strength. Jesus is our source. He's our peace. He's our joy. He's our provider. He meets all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God knows what we need. But it gets back to what I said in the closing, I believe, in the last video was repent. We need to let go of our idols. We need to let go of all the things we're holding on to. We need to get up out of the pit of sin that we're wallowing in. And we need to turn back to our Savior, repent of our sins, and be washed in the blood of Christ, and be set apart from all that. It says in Hebrews that Adulterers and fornicators, God will judge. Plain and simple. We need to let go of some of that stuff. We need all that stuff that we're hanging on to that's not pleasing to God. Let go of it. Unless he has to turn the fan up to high. That is the word for today. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, next week I'm going to, that's to the church. Now when I'm saying church, I've got to close with this. I'm not talking about the local church, the church I go to. I'm talking about the body of Christ. This is not just going to happen in America. I believe it's going to happen all over the world, not through just me talking about it. I'm just reaching a very small few people. God's raising up pre preachers and teachers and whatever all over the world to talk about. Jesus is coming back, folks, and he will purify his church, and he will remove the chafe so he can bring the wheat into the, his garner, or he can catch his bride away. Uh, I'll, I'll say this, I felt like I was supposed to say this, if you was going to go get your bride, would you want her, if, if your bride, if she was, she had 15,000 lovers in her life? I don't think so. You want someone who loves you. You want someone who cares about you, who embraces you, not everything else and everybody else. So God's looking for a bride, and he says in one place, every spot and every wrinkle, he'll remove it. He does that by his blood. God chastens us and God separates us and God sanctifies us. His number one way of doing it is by the Holy Spirit and by His Word. But what if we won't listen to the Word or don't know the Word? Or we don't ever get into it. Or we don't want to know about it. Or we just cherry pick the good parts out of it. His blessings. Some people, I guess I'm not done yet. Some people have the concept of God that He's just a big sugar daddy. He just blesses us and gives us all kinds of little kisses and lovings and blessings and that's it. And some people have the concept that God is a big tyrant, just wants to beat you up and burn you up as a crispy critter. That's the wrong concept, and that's the wrong concept. God is a loving, holy Father. He loves us. He loves us so much He gave us Jesus. We know that. But He's also holy. He's also mighty, holy. There's no darkness in Him, no shadow of turning. He is light. So there is the right balance. A lot of people have got the wrong balance about God. Praise you, Jesus. But Jesus is coming back. And he's separating us from the world. and He's separating us from the chafe. And I'll close with this. I believe I'll close with this. In John, the 15th chapter, Jesus talked about He's the vine, we're the branches. And the Father, He's the husbandman. The Father prunes us that we might bear more fruit. Pruning is a process of cutting off little things that are all off a plant, like dead sticks or little limbs that, that's dead or, or suckers that take away the strength of the, the plant, you cut those off. Cut off. You cut off those little dead things and things that doesn't produce fruit. Same way with us. God will cut off those things. In the wintering process and the wind that's blowing right now, the adversities, He works it all to our good. Hallelujah. So, hey, thanks for watching. Stay safe. God bless. Thank you, Lord Jesus.